Well, we've been reporting uh, that uh, the insurance bill has been tabled in the Rajya Sabha at this point in time. Or rather, not the bill, but the report uh, by the select committee has been report has been tabled at this point in time. And uh, let's, in fact, get uh, to Ashwin Parikh to talk uh, exactly about this. Hi, Mr. Parikh. Thanks very much for joining in. So, finally, that day has come. Give us a sense in terms of what you expect the select panel to possibly throw up and when would you see the bill see the light of day? Uh, well, I mean, the first and the foremost is it's a long-awaited uh, bill now. I mean, the first draft was made in 2008 and then in 2014 we saw some more additions being made. Uh, first and foremost is, I mean, everything depends on A, the, the recommendations made by the committee and also, you know, the order of dissent. I mean, in the sense, if we find that uh, let's say the large parties uh, in the opposition but larger parties have really uh, recommended you know that the amendment should happen uh, and also I mean more significantly the foreign investment you know in the insurance sector if it is permitted to go to go up to 49 percent then I suppose hmm. the order of dissent will decide if uh, we don't have too much of dissent then the, the upper house may approve uh, in which case then uh, it goes to the president for notification and then it becomes the act thereafter so a lot depends on the order and uh, i mean the detail in terms of who is agreeing and who which party is not basically okay uh, mr parikh just hold that thought we have ritu joining in to tell us about the details of uh, the select panels committee and the report which they've tabled in the parliament today uh, ritu over to you well, uh, the report uh, was just tabled by Chandan Mitra, who heads the panel, and uh, we should be getting the uh, copy of the report in a while. We have not seen the final copy as of yet, but uh, the draft copy that we have seen, uh, two key recommendations, uh, firstly, of course, 49% FDI cap, uh, and this FDI cap will be in the form of a composite FDI cap, which means that uh, the foreign instruments uh, for investments, they cannot exceed 49%, be it FDI, be it SPI, be it NRI. So that can't exceed 49%. That is one. And secondly, the, the definition of ownership and control uh, is to be embedded in the Insurance Act Amendment itself, uh, which means that uh, executive orders will not be able to change the definition of uh, uh, ownership and control as far as insurance companies are concerned. Both these demands were made by the Congress party and has, uh, according to our sources, found a place in the report. Remember that the select panel report is binding. And hence, uh, the, the process now is that uh, the cabinet will take up uh, the new changes uh, in the insurance uh, amendment bill. The cabinet will approve it. And then, once the cabinet approves it, then the uh, bill will be tabled in Rajya Sabha. And we understand that that process will happen sometime next week. Uh, but, uh, but even as the report has been tabled, there uh, are uh, dissent notes as well. Of course, TMC is one party. Left parties uh, have also submitted a dissent note. And we have been uh, told that JDU and the Samajwadi Party have also, uh, you know, uh, have also, uh, are also a party to the dissent note that has been submitted by the CPM. With okay. That to you. okay, Ritu, you did uh, say something with regards to composite, uh, you know, composite FDI, but anything in terms of the initial capital base also, which was expected to possibly be hiked to 100 crores versus 50 crores? Uh, from, from what we understand in the draft report, it, it talked about a 100 crore figure, but we have not seen the final report yet. We mm. should be getting it in a while, and uh, you know, I'll be able to, you know, tell you, uh, you know, give an accurate picture on this and several other provisions that uh, are in the select panel in a while. Okay. Indeed, uh, well, uh, of course, uh, the select panel has accepted suggestions made by the Congress. That's the news we're getting, uh, source-based news. So, it it looks like now that it's only a matter of time before mm. the, the bill is actually passed, and uh, that's something which is. Uh, exciting a lot of this stock sector. Yes, we have Max India, which is now up around 6 odd percent. Exide, which also has an insurance play attached to it. That stock is up around 2.4 percent. But Max India always sees the highest surge. We also have Bajaj Finser, which is reacting Reliance Capital, which is up around 1.7 percent as well. So all of them at some point could possibly be beneficiaries of FDI in insurance if in case it does come through. And it seems as though it is one step closer. Uh, Mr. Parikh, uh, there is that composite FDI FDI, which is now possibly going to be, you know, 49%. That is what is indicated in terms of, uh, you know, uh, the select panel report. Your thoughts on it and what exactly does that composite 49% FDI entail? 
Well, actually it's composite investment, it's just composite foreign investment. What it would therefore mean is, hmm. as I understand, is that it will have the FDI component, it will have the FII and NRI components also, uh, NR components. So what it would really mean is that 49% uh, uh, that is not hard cast. It's left to the shareholders. If the shareholders decide, let's say the foreign shareholder decides to keep his investment up to 26% for instance, then he may allow the Indian company to offer the rest of its equity to the market, for instance, and then the FIIs can pick it up. So, I mean, I, I'm really personally very glad. I must say that uh, uh, this is a very welcome suggestion. The matter of how much of within that 49% is FDI, how much of it is FII, is entirely left to the shareholders. Each shareholder agreement, the way it has been drawn, you know, the shareholders will now decide will now discuss about the entire thing. What worries me, however, is the definition of the Indian management control. Okay. Uh, that's something that uh, we may have to examine the fine print, basically. Uh, Mr. Parikh, when you say definition of Indian management control and defining it in the fine print, what do you mean? What would be the cause of concern there? Well, see, basically, the whole question is, the class of equity that the, let's say, either the FIRs or the foreign investors will get. And if we restrict the voting rights, for instance, you know, that is if, that's a second class of, uh, let's say, equity that is required to be offered, let's say, to the, uh, to the foreign investors, then I suppose it would not be a complete reform. I mean, uh, the valuation itself will suffer because equity with voting rights and equity without voting rights are two different things altogether. So that's one uh, observation I'm making. Hmm. The second observation is, you know, it shouldn't become a hindrance. You know, I mean, so far we've seen that after almost about 58, 59 partnerships that have happened, the foreign partners have worked very closely with the Indian partners. We haven't had any dispute or any major uh, issue in, uh, in regard, let's say, the shareholder understanding. This, this creating a new class of equity could be a big problematic. So I would say if Indian management control only keeps itself to 51% of equity, hmm. which the Indian shareholders put together could own, then then it's fine. I mean, then that's a, that definition is a very workable definition, Ikta. Okay, coming back to composite FDI, uh, you know, Mr. Parikh, I just wanted to get a sense. Would it then mean that a couple of these insurance companies, which are now subsidiaries of bigger companies, would have to possibly be hived off in order in order for them to take advantage of that composite FDI rule? Well, that is only one of the implications. That okay. is going to be one of the implications. I don't think that is too much of an implication because... You know, all these investments made by the parent companies, I mean, in many cases, it's conglomerates and also banking companies. Hmm. Now, these are investments. You know, these are not subsidiary organizations as yet. I mean, these are subsidiary organizations, but in the books of banks, these are investments basically in the form of shares held in these entities. So I would say, therefore, that by virtue of being a shareholder of a JV company, the person does not automatically become the shareholder of the bank. So, I mean, I'm not too much worried about the structure part, but I'm certainly concerned about the composite limit to the extent that if it is entirely, if it was entirely FDI, which was the original reform, fortunately, they've now changed it to composite limit. So, I mean, to the, in that regard, I would say it's a very welcome move. What will happen is if you had if we had said that it was only going to be permissible by, by way of FDI, hmm. then it would have created a deadlock situation, Ikta. Hmm. You know, then one shareholder is 49%, the other shareholder is 51%. Sure. Nobody will take the equity to the market unless hmm. both of them jointly agree to take it to the market, you know. Okay. All right, uh, Mr. Parikh, hold that thought. We have Lata joining into this discussion as well. Lata, finally, um, have you, you know, we've seen this progress over a long period of time. Your thoughts on it? Well, actually, uh, the biggest relief will be that it has passed. Mm. After all, it's been taken, it's a long time in coming. And this will also be the first legislative effort of the new government. Mm. So to that extent, it will definitely have a bonhomie. Mm. But uh, it's, since it is foreign ownership uh, uh, at 49 and it's FDI and FII mixed, it's immediately not going to really open the tap of uh, foreign investment very significantly. It will be 
uh, okay. And uh, in any case, the price will, the, it's, a, it's a big price discovery. We'll have to see if anyone comes to the market and therefore there will be a bit of a price discovery effort for sure. Actually, uh, on that uh, matter, uh, 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 Mr. Parikh, uh, do you expect uh, in the next 18 months somebody will come to the market? Well, you see, I mean, uh, this will certainly pave way for way for the Indian promoters. You see, if I look at the, the life insurance sector, particularly where a huge amount of capital is required, Lata, mm. you know, I am seeing that at least four or five companies are almost ready to take the, the equity to the market. They have performance to show, they have started making profits, you know, so, and then there is no need for additional capital in these cases. So they can take it to the market, you know. Mm. So, I mean, I am certainly seeing that. Uh, your point on price discovery is a very valid one. Uh, if, let's say, out of these first four or five, I mean, all of them have really done extremely well in the last 12 years. They've built a good portfolio, a good life fund. You know, they go to the market, then we may get a certain order of price. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, then it, it creates a market. It creates markets for the, the others also to follow, in fact, mm -hmm. in, in that particular that area. That perhaps will uh, mm -hmm. open another tap of uh, capital for... Uh, these players. Uh, Mr. S. B. Mathur, the former chairman of LIC, has also joined in into the conversation. Uh, your take, Mr. Mathur, it now looks like with the select committee uh, tabling its report in Parliament, it's only a matter of days before the cabinet uh, approves it and uh, tables the bill itself. Uh, could happen in this session, or most likely the, uh, the bill becomes law in this session itself. Uh, uh, how do you see the contents that are known so far? Well, I feel it's a welcome step. You know, FDI, if being raised to 49%, would not have driven the valuation so much. We have seen in this like, capital market, it is the FII's mm. who drive the valuation. And to that extent, Indian promoters should be thankful mm. that the FII will be there to give them a good price, good mm. value for money. Mm. They have been kept invested for uh, 10 years, more than 10 years now. Mm. So I think they will get good valuation. Mm -hmm. Number two, I see it as more as a uh, restoring the credibility of the country as a whole. You know, we have been talking for last uh, 14 years, even before the sector was opened up, that it will be taken to 49. Successive government have made this declaration. And it's uh, kind of we were losing uh, acceptance that, well, everyone is saying it should be 49 and they have not been able to do it. So to that extent, I see it as a welcome measure. Uh, secondly, there are other things in the insurance bill uh, which are very critical. One of them is Section 45, which gives the insurer right to repudiate a policy mm. in case of early claim. Mm. They were tinkering it with it. Rajya Sabha presentations were made to the select committee mm. that you are curbing policyholders' rights mm. and unnecessarily exposing them to risk okay. uh, of denial of a claim. So it should not be done or it should be modified. Okay. I would love to see what the committee has recommended on that. Oh. So, okay. so that, that's a very critical mm. because they were raising mm. the period from two years mm. That is the policy if it is taken today, yeah. if, if early claim happens within two years and then non-disclosure, mm. volunt uh, deliberate non-disclosure, okay. the claim could be repudiated. Okay. Now the amendment, the amended bill suggested yeah. that this period to be raised to three years. Okay. Instead of two years, up to three years, policyholders could repudiate. Okay. And they had, they have all, all they had also included in cases of involuntary non-disclosure. Then I am not aware. I have made a wrong statement. Okay. Or I have concealed a fact. Okay. It is not done deliberately. Yeah. Hmm. Even those cases it. are now covered, okay. which is very very dangerous trend okay. because uh, claim settlement death, claim settlement hmm. has to be very very customer friendly I yeah mean, i agree with you actually we didn't look at the customer friendly angles we were more worried about the macros in terms of uh, capital that will come and uh, the, the sector's future uh, but mr mathur you expect a listing uh, or at least somebody to divest uh, in the next one year 18 months 2015 sure should see some uh, issues within by the end of this year uh, by the next year i definitely see one or two companies going public hmm. because the market is ripe, investor confidence is coming back to the market 
and they have and i feel said just now they have built up a good portfolio they have got a good built a good uh, customer base so i see every possibility of one or two companies at least going public by march 6 Okay. 16, I would say. March 16. You agree? Yeah, that's the coming year. The okay. two months. I don't see anything happening okay. up to March. Next financial year. All right, uh, uh, Mr. Parekh, you agree that you will have a couple of uh, people coming to the market uh, in FY 16. Yes, I mean they will. And uh, you know, I mean we are just not talking about capital and market. There are several other reforms associated with this, which will also give the the industry, the sector. a good good boost i mean health insurance is one reinsurance is a major one that's going to happen through this we are soon going to have reinsurance branches in this country so i mean uh, these are some good reforms they have been waiting for 8 years now lata mm. okay okay i believe oh. yeah we are waiting by for a couple more reactions that we are waiting for but uh, mr parik so overall um, have you got a sense in which companies or which type of companies would possibly see the more interest for example or maybe even between the general insurance as well as the life insurance space any of those numbers that you might have worked out or companies that you might have even spoken to yeah see i mean basically from you know i mean i've done about 35 joint ventures by now in health life and uh, general i mean i would say that uh, let's say health is still young i mean in the sense health companies have not done more than 5 6 years so they are not ready to take anything to the market at this point in time a few general insurance companies are in a position to take their equity to the mm. market mm. you know i mean till about last year or, or year before the industry was bleeding so there wasn't too much of a performance to be showed mm. to the shareholders now things have changed you know general Fair insurance enough. sector has really uh, done well in the last one or two years yeah, actually, but life insurance is the main one hmm. there will be more companies in life sector who will take their equity to the market basically certainly actually one potential candidate is now joining us uh, uh, sanjeev bajaj of bajaj fin service with us uh, sanjeev uh, now the uh, uh, select committee's uh, report has been tabled in parliament and the expectation is that in a day or two the bill will be tabled so it looks like sure shot uh, this session we are going to get the winter session is going to see the passage of this bill uh, how how do how do things change for you in the next 18 months do we see you come to the market uh so lata we are finally seeing i think uh, light at the end of what was a very very long tunnel um but yes uh, i am hopeful now that this uh, bill does get passed we don't as bajaj alliance need to go to the market uh, we have been mm. building this business very gradually mm. and profitably so we are adequately capitalized but there will be many other companies that are in urgent need of capital and uh, this uh, bill once it becomes an act should end up benefiting them as well mm-hmm. okay. you know there is i understand the report will also have details on definition of uh, ownership and control we still don't have those details we are uh, it's it's yet to be put in the public domain this was more here say what would you like to hear on that so the first thing is that uh, while there have been some calls for uh, the definition of uh, ownership and control to be in the bill which becomes an act uh, the earlier proposal was to leave it within the you know definition that exists in the country for example the definition of control has been uh, uh, very clearly laid out in the new companies act as well as by sebi rbi and fipb mm. um, clearly over here the desire is for uh, the control should be with the indian promoter as an indian promoter i am naturally uh, very happy with that um, i think long term it makes sense in ensuring that uh, as these companies grow uh, some of these uh, sectors whether banking or insurance are sensitive and you want to ensure that the companies will outlast the individuals who are investing in those companies or who are buying policies of those companies mm-hmm. but uh, we have to again wait and watch we have to see what the final language is what is the flexibility mm-hmm. around that the idea is not to deter any investor from coming in the idea is to do what is right for our country and for these companies long term 
Okay, Mr. Bajaj, uh, I had one question with regards to composite FDI because there were a couple of reports that I had read earlier where there were a couple of companies that said that maybe, uh, you know, composite, uh, they had some dissent or maybe some sort of apprehension against composite FDI. Can you explain to us what this would mean for an insurance venture if in case they want to attract or take advantage of this composite FDI rule? See, very simplistically, if it's only uh, FDI that is allowed to go up to 49%, for companies like us, it doesn't matter because our partner, Alias, mm -hmm. is one of the largest companies in the world. They can easily put in the money required to take their stake up, and we would more than welcome that as well. But there could be other companies that want to go and list, say, in the stock markets. Now, if you're not going to allow FII, which mm -hmm. means that when they go and list, only Indian investors can buy that stock. Now, where is that capital available mm -hmm. in the country for five insurance companies? companies whether life or non-life mm. want to go to the ma market. So it creates greater flexibility. What one also should understand is that since this uh, bill is taken now eight, nine, ten years before it's finally coming to becoming mm. an act, uh, I'm sure the government has got many other things to do than to look at this bill again within the next two or three years. Yeah. So they need to introduce provisions which will help the industry for the next five, ten years at least. Yeah, fair point going by the time they've taken. Sanjeev, uh, you see m &As, uh, I know of some uh, partnerships at least where both partners want to go out. Well, uh, you see, that's you why you need, large, you need large, strong Indian partners so that they won't go anywhere. <laughs> okay, so do I see, I'm, am I speaking to a buyer? I'm always a, a willing buyer at the right price and for good quality. <laughs> what do you think, Mr. Mathur? There will be M&As now. Once you list, you get a price, you get a, a market price. So M&As will be uh, a little more uh, uh, in the news. Well, I don't see too many M&As happening, at least in the life pain. So there will be substitution, somebody going in, somebody coming out. But I don't see too many M&As happening. All right, sir. I think uh, we can uh, wind up our discussion. Mr. Mathur, uh, uh, Mr. Parikh and Sanjeev, thank you very much for joining in this discussion. Back to you.